So today folks I'm going to show you how to hatch a killerfish called Afanius Dispar. This is a really interesting killerfish that uh, comes primarily from Egypt, Israel, Jordan, that sort of area. Now I've actually purchased these eggs on eBay and they will set you back roughly 19 pounds for 20 eggs. So I've received this parcel today and as far as killer eggs go this is quite a large parcel. Um, this particular chap has decided to send the eggs inside um, a breathing bag inside this polythene box. Now this is not normally how I would send my eggs but I will explain a bit more later. This is actually very well wrapped for killerfish eggs. Um, normally I would send them in a much thinner box than this. And it's got a very thick layer of uh, bubble wrap and more polystyrene in there and that's it there um, now I have never ever received eggs in a bag like this before uh, this is a breathing bag so I can understand the idea behind it so it will let all the bad gases out of the bag and oxygen back into the bag it's a good idea okay now I can already see some of the eggs floating in the bag and there's some filamentous algae that the eggs were most probably deposited with in here as well. Now, the reason I don't send my eggs like this is because in the past, many people taking the eggs out the bag get eggs stuck inside the little corners of the bag or they stick to the bag and people end up losing them. So I've stopped using this method myself. Now, without having opened the bag yet, I can already see there's roughly about 15 healthy eggs in here and there's most probably a few more because I purchased 20. Now I can actually understand another reason why somebody would send eggs in one of these breathable bags. It's in case the fry actually hatch while in transport. Now why would the fry hatch? This is a very quick hatching species. Uh, they can hatch between 10 and 14 days. So the problem is by the time you've collected the eggs and made sure that they've actually been fertilized, four or five days have already passed. And depending on where you're sending these eggs, there's a very small chance that some of these eggs might hatch while in transit. So I can see it from that point of view. Now, these are the little test tubes I normally send eggs in. Now, the reason I send them in this is because I ship eggs worldwide and I need it to be in a smaller box as possible. I send them in a little cardboard box so the chances of them getting squashed is very remote. Whereas in bags it's very very easy for the eggs to get squashed but because this particular set came in polystyrene box um, there was no danger of that happening. But when you're shipping eggs worldwide it can be a very very expensive proposition to send eggs this way. Now another problem with sending eggs this way is that many countries have a ban on killifish eggs and if you send water in a bag like this, this is going to create a lot of suspicion. So the benefit of sending eggs in a bag like this is you can get rid of the bad gases and if the fish fry actually hatch in the bag, um, they have a chance of surviving. As opposed to these little test tubes which doesn't allow for the gas exchange and certainly doesn't allow for uh, the fry to be hatching in here. But I normally send these next day delivery. So if I'm sending anywhere in the UK, you're guaranteed to get this the next day. So it is very, very rare that um, eggs will actually hatch inside the test tube. But with some of the short gestation species, as in the Afanius, this maybe a better way I don't know um, I'm not a hundred percent convinced yet maybe any of you that have had experience uh, getting killifish eggs like this in a bag you can drop me a line below but yeah interesting now normally when I hatch my own killifish or when I've bought them in I would hatch them in containers like this a little plastic tub with a lid I would only fill it up about half an inch to an inch depending on the species now I would keep the killifish frying uh, uh, even after they've hatched. 
I know a lot of people that will hatch them in a small little container and then transfer them into whatever container they're going to keep them in. And I will give you a little tip now. Killifish absolutely hate, especially the fry, they absolutely hate the water changes. And if you change them into water chemistry that's not similar to what they were hatched in, there's a very good chance that you're going to lose the fry to a white spot or something similar. Now the reason people used to do this is because in the past if you bought killifish eggs that were in peat you would hatch the fish and then remove them uh, from that container because the peat acidifies the water and this allows for uh, white spot and similar kind of diseases to spread very very quickly. Now even in fish with soft water species the last thing you want to do is raise the little fry in very very soft water because this is the quickest way of getting disease spread through the batch. Now with annual killifish like that, I actually raise my eggs in coconut fiber, which is a neutral pH. So I do not remove my fry from the container once they've in there. I even leave the coconut fiber in the container. Another reason I do this is because the coconut fiber actually allows for infusoria to grow in the container itself very, very quickly. You find that if you add a pinch of food to a container with coconut fiber, uh, the next day you will have infusoria all over the place. And this is perfect for the fry to feed on. But anyway, back to this particular species is that I will raise them in a tub like this. I will add some java moss and I will put some small snails in there as well. The reason for the snails is that they will eat any uneaten food that's in the container and the infusoria start growing from the snail waste. So once the fish hatch, I actually leave the babies in there. Uh, once a week, I will actually top the container up. And once it starts getting to about half the depth or full depth, I will only then start transferring the fry out, especially if it's fry that need to be, uh, the sexes need to be kept separate. But up to that point, I keep them in this. I found that when I keep transferring fry from dish to dish to dish, that's when I have my highest losses. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to raise the eggs in one of our bowls. Now, I'm not going to tell my wife that I'm nicking one of her bowls because she'll freak out. I fill in the bowl with maybe an inch of water and I'll transfer the eggs directly into here. And the reason is so that I can film or try and film at least the eggs hatching. So the interesting thing about Afanius de Spa is that it's actually a hard water killifish. So if you're going to raise this fish, you need to keep them in hard water. Now, the water that I'm using to raise these eggs in actually come from one of my Rift Lake cyclic tanks. So the water is already very hard. Another thing is, as the fry start getting older, you need to start adding a little bit of salt to buffer the water. Now, by the time they're adults, I normally put a couple of teaspoons in for a small little nine liter tank. You don't have to do this, but for optimal health, I suggest you do it. So I'm gonna now cut open this bag and pour it into the bowl. At this point, I'm gonna have to be very, very careful that as the water goes out the bag, that eggs don't get pinched and lodged into the corners of the bag. Now I can already see as I'm pouring the water out of the bag here that eggs are definitely going to get caught. So I'm going to try and cut the bag open wider so that I don't lose any of the eggs. Now as you can see that is a, quite a messy way of getting the eggs out of the bag and making sure they're all out. I personally don't like this method. I've had too many people in the past complain that they didn't spot the eggs, it was stuck in the corner of the bags. So I've just counted the eggs in the little bowl there and I count 19 healthy eggs. Now I actually ordered 20 eggs, so losing one egg, it's not too bad. But now when people are buying these eggs on eBay and you're selling them 20 eggs, 99.9% .9 of the time they're going to expect to get 20 healthy eggs. Now what a lot of people don't understand is that sometimes in transit, 
depending on how the eggs have been posted, that the change in temperature, or if it's going by aeroplane, the change in pressure can actually just make the egg dissolve in the water or make them hatch prematurely. So normally what I do is I normally add extra eggs um, so that when somebody's buying 20 eggs, they maybe get 25 or 30 eggs. I always make sure that the eggs are eyed up in the case of eggs that are being shipped in water or at least fertilized because if an egg is not fertilized what happens is going to fungus and this fungus will spread to other unfertilized eggs now it's quite rare for a fertilized egg to fungus but under the right conditions in a small container it is possible so yes i normally send more eggs than uh, somebody has purchased now, considering that this is quite a difficult species to get hold of, I'm quite happy that there are only 19 eggs because they all seem to be very healthy and I suspect they will hatch in the next few days. So I'm going to get my little macro lens out and I'm going to try and monitor these eggs as they hatch. Now, the other thing that could have happened is that one of the eggs have got stuck in the bag. And this is why I don't like sending eggs in the bag because Many people buying the eggs like to count the eggs. It is not always possible when they're in a bag like this. Now, one of the points I want to raise about sending fish eggs in bags like this is that the bag is translucent and so are the eggs. So they are really difficult to spot, especially when they get stuck in the little nooks and grooves that you see. Yeah. Now, a piece of advice I want to give you when buying killifish eggs, it doesn't matter what species it is, that don't just buy 20. Now, I know most people just buy 20 because of the sheer cost of them and they just want to try them out. Normally, when you're buying 20 eggs, as I say, sometimes 20 eggs don't always show up, is that you'll get, as a rule of thumb, at least a pair or maybe a trio, if you're lucky, from a set of 20 eggs. So what you would, or what I would normally do is I would normally buy two bags if the person has that many eggs so that at least I'm guaranteed at least two pairs or at least two trios to allow me to successfully breed them on because just because you get a pair or trio of killifish eggs to adulthood doesn't mean to say that you're going to successfully breed them uh, depending on the species many of the males can be very very aggressive now you can imagine if you've only got a pair of a very endangered species and the male kills the female or the male or female is infertile, you're gonna be very unhappy. So my advice is buy as many eggs as you can afford, hatch them in different containers. Don't hatch all your eggs in one container. That way, if something goes wrong in one of the containers, you've still got a fallback. So what more can I tell you about this species? Well, it grows up to eight centimeters and it tolerates an extremely wide range of water conditions. It can live in temperatures as low as 15 degrees. Now, I know that many people actually have bred this fish in the UK successfully outside in ponds and it can live in temperatures up to 30 degrees. Not only that, it can live in pure fresh water, but it also tolerates water with a very high salinity content. Hence, many breeders put salt in the water to get this fish into condition. Now, this fish can be very aggressive and I'm talking about the males here. When you have two males in a tank, they will flash at each other all day and eventually the weaker male will succumb and will either skulk in a corner somewhere or will be killed off. Many people have success in breeding these fish in trios or you can keep them in small little groups. So you need a minimum fish tank size of roughly 60 centimeters by 30 centimeters to breed a trio of these, one male and two females. Or a larger tank will suffice when breeding a small group of these. Now the tank setup is very basic, just a sponge filter, no heater required. Now in the wild, these are gravel spawners. That means that they'll lay the eggs in the gravel and they will just leave the eggs there. But be warned, if you choose this method and you leave the fish in the tank, they will eventually find the eggs and they will eat them. Now, this species also lays their eggs in all different types of um, filamentous algae. Now, trust me, to try and get the eggs out of java moss or something similar is hellish. 
So many people use woolen mops, the darker the better, dark green. And you make the, the length quite long so that it's floating on top, but the bottom is lying on the base. So the fish have a choice of where they want to lay their eggs. But uh, I will make a video later on about how to actually breed these fish because there are some very unusual successful techniques in getting the maximum amount of eggs out of this particular species. So this has been a very frustrating week trying to hatch these killifish eggs. Um, I've had them just over a week now. I think I've had them about nine days. And although they're fully eyed up, they're showing no signs of hatching. Now, typically for this species, the hatching rate is anything from 10 days to 15 days. So I've had them now nine days. They were in the post for four days. So that's 13 days already. Um, I suspect the person that bred them had them for at least a week before he sent them because they're already eyed up. So these eggs are way overdue. They haven't died yet, so I'm gonna have to try and trigger these eggs into hatching. So what I'm gonna try first of all is bring them out into the sunlight. Um, maybe the sunlight will trigger these eggs to hatch. If that fails, I'm gonna try dropping the temperature in the water container and see if that gets them going. So we're gonna try the sunlight trick first because this particular species does rely on the sunlight to get the eggs to hatch. Um, it seems that they instinctively know uh, when spring and summer is arriving. Well, it's been about three hours now and although the eggs are showing signs of life and they are moving about in these eggs, they're still not hatching. So I'm now gonna to go to my uh, second way of trying to get these eggs to hatch. I'm gonna drip some cold water, which I've been leaving in the fridge, into the bowl and see if that does anything for them. This has been three frustrating days since my last attempt of getting these fish to, to hatch. Everything I tried didn't work. Sometimes you just can't force nature, but then Considering that this is a cool water species, I decided to put these eggs in a cold room. Um, when I say cold room, the ambient temperature in there was about 18 degrees. And then after three days, I actually moved them into my fish room, which is quite warm. It's sitting at about 25, 26 degrees Celsius. And lo and behold, within hours, the eggs started hatching. So it just shows you with some of these species, you just have to keep trying different methods. Now it seems with this particular species, it's the change of temperature from cold to hot, which triggered the hatching. So when hatching the species, make sure you've got some brine shrimp to hand. Now they're large enough to take the brine shrimp. You can also feed them uh, baby microworm. Now also make sure that you've got some infusoria to hand. Um, when the fish first hatch, they don't eat immediately. Some species actually have a yolk sac and they'll use that for the first three days before they'll go into any foods. I noticed with this hatching, some of the fry size is variable. Most of the fry are large enough to take the brown shrimp, but there's a couple that are too small and I suspect I'm gonna to have to give them some infusoria. So that's about it for hatching the species. I'm gonna show you a short clip now of the little babies. Um, I'm now going to transfer them to a, a plastic dish. I wouldn't normally do this, but I was only using the white dish to show you a more clearer picture. And I will keep you updated as to the growth of this fish. And as adults, I'll make a video on how to breed them.